have this opinion that they're going to bother everybody that they call. So, all right. So today I, I, we're going to have Jackie back. Um, she's going to give us a little, you know, a little mindset boost about for sale bonders and expireds. But we are looking for people to practice. So this is an interactive class because we could talk to you guys till we're blue in the face. We want you to unmute your mics. We want you to show your face. We see you all there. I want you. I want to see your face. I don't care if you've got a big towel on your head and you just came out of the shower, um, but we want to see your faces. So, so let us see your faces. And then um, Jackie and I, maybe what we'll do is go over a couple scripts um, today. And then, you know, Jackie, if there's anything you want to kind of throw out there for them to, you know, get their mindset prepared. And then we do want volunteers to practice doing this because if you guys don't practice you're never going to do it you're just going to keep showing up to trainings and it's never going to happen so so with that you're talking about if you just practice and you don't do anything nothing's going to happen i say to my clients there is no substitute for massive action practice is, is great uh, there's a quote i love that says uh, luck happens when preparation meets opportunity yeah. and the truth is, when you think about fizzbles and expires, the reason why I love them and I always love them, in addition to the fact that I'm impatient, so who can I talk to that I could take a listing today? That didn't always happen my first year in real estate. I was talking to a ton of people and not able to set appointments. But when you're talking to a fizzbo and an expired, you're halfway there because you're going directly to people that want to sell now. You're not randomly called, not that there's there's nothing wrong with calling a neighborhood. I did a lot of that too when I ran out of fizzbos and expireds to call. But when you're calling a neighborhood, you you got to find somebody who wants to sell first before you could get an appointment. Fizzbos and expires, I bypassed that step. So this is really why I love them. They may not be... I guess I'm, I'm just giving you a pep talk so you can fall in love with them too. They may not be as easy to talk to as someone in a, in a neighborhood that you're calling and just listed, just sold circle prospecting, whatever you call it. But you've got a high probability of setting an appointment here if you're able to actually communicate in a way that they feel like meeting with you is worth their time. So I love them. And I, I think the in thinking about people not taking action. The more you prepare, the more you practice, the more you role play. I used to do a lot. I don't know if you, if you did this, Tina. I used to have, this is going back 25 years ago when I got into real estate. I sometimes, you know, I had role plays that were amazing with role play partners, or I had a good role play with a coach and I have it recorded. And then I would transcribe it word for yeah. word. <laughs> and in cassettes okay yeah. and, and and rewind and and write that it would take me to transcribe a five minute role play sometimes it would take me almost an hour because yeah. i'm going back on every single word of it and that's such a great way to practice and the more you practice meaning the transcribing role plays um chanting the scripts out loud which i used to do role playing a lot and then you take action you you talk to people Oh yeah, but you know, people are gonna make mistakes. They're gonna be rude and nasty. Uh-huh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You gotta have realistic expectations because if you just expect that everybody's gonna be nice and they're not gonna give you any objections, then when it happens, you're like, oh no, you know, you're like freaking out. No, it's just the way it is. And it's like that even for, for you and I today, Tina, you know, I yeah. get on the phone, I have some live FISBO calls on my YouTube channel that I've done, you know, every couple of months I get on the phone and I call FISBOs. Do you think I get people on the phone that are mean, they're rude, they're having a bad day? I don't care. Do I, is it with me? No, they have no idea who I am. I don't, I don't care. I just, you, you got to become resilient because that's what it takes. But the rewards is really being able to have not only an amazing career and making a fortune. I remember when I got into real estate um, coaches and people used to say, well, you know, work, you know, you got to work on yourself. I didn't even know what that meant. You know, I get it. You know, now it's like work on myself. I, I don't care about myself. I just, I'm, I just want to make some money because I'm broke. So, right. and in the end, yes, you're going to make a lot of money, 
but you're going to become a powerhouse within yourself. Just the confidence that you know what you're doing. You, you can pick up the phone, you can generate a listing appointment out of nothing without a lead. You walk into the office in the morning, you don't have a lead and you, you, you're able to call Fizbos and expireds and turn this into a qualified listing appointment, go list them the same day. I mean, the adrenaline, I get the adrenaline rush just talking about it. It's awesome, but mm -hmm. it's going to take in the beginning. Yeah. It's, I still like, I chose to have fun. I had fear, doubt, I have negative thinking, the whole thing. And I still do it much less than I used to, obviously, because you've been working on my mindset since I got into real estate, but it still happens because we're all human beings, but it doesn't matter. You just got to keep going. You know, I remember, Tina, I remember the um, Albert Gray, the essay, The Common Denominator of Success. I haven't read that actually. It's really cool. Like if you Google it, it's right there on Google. But the, the, okay. according to Albert Gray, right? Different people say common denominator of success, different things. He says it's doing what you're supposed to do on the days when you don't feel like it. Exactly. Yeah, that's how you develop discipline. So anyway, that's, there's no better. I mean, I just love physicals and expires. They're amazing. So anyway. They are. And I think that it's like, you know, and I think people, you know, look at this task and they they can't get ready to get started to begin. And they don't realize that what you were just talking about, writing out your scripts, I would I would role play with Aaron Novello. Remember Aaron? And he would say something and I would record it. And then I literally would stop the recording and go back and write out every word because I thought, gosh, that was genius. Or I loved how he sounded. And we would practice like we were acting actors and actresses right in a movie and it was that specific that you had to get that good but that daily practice you know just like if you're a basketball player and you're trying to you know be a winner you're not going to practice once learn how to play and then it's over you're constantly honing in your craft and you've got that blind faith that this is going to work so so yeah i i i agree i think it's exciting there's an adrenaline rush but it's just getting people over that initial I would say what first six months, how long are your students because you've got sales X training, how long are your students do you think from day one to the time that they're like finally comfortable where you know they're getting things rolling, how long do you think that takes really. Six months to a year. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that within that period of time they're not getting any appointments or listings, but right. to actually start feeling like hmm, you know i'm starting to get this the more comfortable with all of the scripts. I mean, you call an expired or a FISBO, you're going to get a lot of objections. They're sometimes, right. they're, you know, these new expires, they're hostile. People are aggressive. So yeah. it's really, there, there's a lot that that is involved. Like you were saying, you were talking about mindset. Yeah. Being able to just handle this in a way where you don't take things personally, you don't let it stop you. And then at the same time, knowing learning what to say and how to say it and then you know now i set an appointment now what it's really being able to feel comfortable and powerful with the listing presentation so it's a process it's not like you know i i was talking to a client today this is a true story <laughs> i hope you won't watch this on youtube and know i'm talking about him so he just signed up like five days ago yeah so he sent an email email and he said I need to speak with Jackie okay so I, I call this I call this agent and he says I signed up for your training because I want to master physicals I said you're in the right place <laughs> it's exact perfect okay let's go and then he said and I as I have you I, I could actually in sales x training I could see the progress of every client like if how many right. times they've logged in what lessons they watch if they watch the whole thing or only 10 percent I see the whole thing so I know he just signed up and Nah, he hadn't started yet. So he's asking me a lot of questions and all the answers are in the platform. All, every question he's asking me. And I said, you have all the answers. You haven't touched anything, started anything. Really what he was looking for is, I want to speak with Jackie for five minutes and I want to tell her everything I need to know. I want her to just wave a magic wand and that's it. Like it's done. And I, I realized that, you know, within a couple of minutes ago, the conversation, I said, 
what you're looking for, you're going to have to put in the time. You're going to have to listen to it. You're going to have to transcribe. You're going to have to do this. You, well, I don't have the time. I'm busy. I said, well, then it's, it, it's not going to happen. Right. It's not going to happen. Right. He's, here's a smart guy with sales experience and people, you know, you, you, you gotta, you gotta understand that this is a process. Yeah. It may, it may take six months to a year. Mm -hmm. So what? Yeah. A year from now, you're going to, by, by actually choosing to practice every day, by choosing to develop the habit and the discipline, you're, you're going to be in a, in a much, much better powerful position in your business and your life. than if you don't do anything, the year's going to pass anyhow. So anyway, it, it does take time. It does. It does. And I mean, there's people on the call. I know Wendy's going to hate me for this. Her camera's off right now. But Wendy, can you unmute yourself? Um, you don't have to turn your camera on. But I wanted to ask Wendy, because um, Wendy came into the real estate world as a brand new agent from, you know, the rental market. She was a, a sales associate um, in another, you know, realm, another field. Um, but Wendy, are you here? I'm here. There she is. So Wendy, um, can you give hi? Um, can you give us the perspective of coming from, um, you know, you were. Um, we'll tell them what you did before, and then your first, I would say, two or three months, you jumped right in and you started calling Fizbos. You started calling expireds. You had never done it before. Give them the mindset of like what it felt like then, and now here we are. What two years later? A year and a half later. Um, mm -hmm or you're doing it daily, like a, a rock star. Um, so tell us that mindset shift and, and start with what you did before real estate. Sure, sure. So I oversaw apartment communities all over the Southeast. So I was in real estate, I worked for a large national real estate company in a way that is severely underpaid <laughs> as I uh, came to find out. Um, and I always knew that I wanted to do the residential brokerage, actually, since I was a little girl. Um, and I um, had the freedom to do so. Um, once my daughter went off to college, I was a single mom. And um, so I quit my corporate job in July 2020. I tested the waters part time because Tina knows I was very scared to leave that salary and those health benefits and take the leap. Um, but I left with um, not a whole lot of money in the bank. Um, it was very little. And so like I had to be successful at this. I was not going to go back. And um, I really listened to what Tina had to say and her scripts and kind of the back was against the wall and this is what I have to do. Um, but there was a lot of times that I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea what was happening, um, but I had to get to know the scripts and I had to, I had to follow the scripts. Um, and I think it was like less than 30 days in that I had got that investor on a FISBO call and um, she said, will you come sit on my porch with me today? And mm -hmm. I said, sure. And it was an $800,000 FISBO call. And so I go sit on her, actually her porch is a, she was trying to sell a rental property. It's like a $3 million house that is in a really nice area of Raleigh and find out that she has 12 investment properties. Mm -hmm. And um, she wanted to get to know me. And then Tina came with me one time too, but she's, um, I've now sold two of her, two of her homes. And she just thinks of me as her agent. Like that's who she thinks of me as. And it was just picking up the phone and calling. And she was like, I get a lot of phone calls, but for some reason, I'm just connecting with you. And there's, but there's some people that don't connect with me. They'll just hang up. It's all the numbers game you just have to keep on dialing for sure. So I'm long-winded. No, I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Right? That's so awesome. I mean, that's exactly what it, it takes. It's like, you know, there are days that you have a great day. I mean, Wendy just picked up a, what, $2.2 .2 million listing, was it? Yeah, it's, we're going to go in at 1.995. But yeah, that was an expired listing. 
That was an expired listing for 1.95, right? Just by picking up the phone and calling. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, and that's in today's market where there's no inventory, supposedly, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so Wendy, I'm going to put you on the spot. I know you, you couldn't turn your camera on. She had a little reaction in her, in her eye. So she's, she just can't turn her camera on. But, um, would you role play um, an expired script or a FISBO script, whatever you're comfortable with? Um, what do you want me to be, though? <laughs> I want you to be the agent. I don't. Oh we know Jackie's God. amazing. Jackie's right. She's been doing it for for years. I want agents to see that you don't have to be perfect. But Wendy has been doing it for two years, so you're gonna look at Wendy and go, "Wow, she's amazing," compared to the agent that's never literally picked up the phone. So, would you do that for me as a favor? All right. Be nice. Okay, good. Yay. I knew I could get someone. Um, so, all right. So Wendy is going to be the agent. Um, Jackie, do you want to be the, 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 uh, seller? Um, I don't know. It's up to you. I could be the seller or you and I can hear in and, and just write down some notes or feedback so we can yeah, or you want to you want to be I'll be the seller and you want to be the the you give the feedback after. It sounds good. Let's Okay, that. good. Cuz you're you're the you're way better than I am. So oh, I mean, what come no, on. I, mean, you're you're the I bow you're down perfect. to you. You're amazing. But I'll yeah, that's good that way. Okay, cuz I want them to hear Wendy and then we'll have Jackie do an expired script as well. So all right, Wendy, I'm the seller. All right. I'll be nice. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm looking for the owner of 123 Main Street. Who's this? Uh, well, good morning. My name is Wendy. I, it sounds like you may be the owner. I am actually a local real estate agent. And um, it, is your name Tina? Yes, I'm Tina. Well, Tina, it's nice to meet you. And again, I do thank you for taking my call. I'm sure that you've figured out by now that your house has come off the market as an expired listing. And Tina, I was calling to see when you will be interviewing agents for the job of selling your home. Um, well, we actually um, have talked to a couple agents already, um, and we're going to just take it off the market for, for a little bit and, and do some renovations. Oh, fantastic. So you have already interviewed some new agents for when you go to put it back on the market. Am I understanding that right? Yes, that's correct. Oh, that's great. Well, Tina, I'm actually calling because I would like to apply for the job of selling your house. And I understand that you do want to do some additional improvements, which is exactly why I need to get in there sooner rather than later. I would hate for you to waste any money on those improvements. Are you typically available in the afternoons or in the evenings? Well, Wendy, I, I think, um, you know, I think we've probably, you know, made the decision and and to be honest, I mean, where where were you when the house was already available? Where was I when the house was available? That's a fabulous question. Tina, can I tell you, I honestly, there's like 3000 homes on the multiple listing service right now. I didn't know that your home was for sale. Do you know why I didn't know your home was for sale? No, your agent didn't call me. And that's one of the reasons why we have got to meet is because I do take a very aggressive approach in getting a home sold. And before you waste, you know, not six more months on the market and sign a contract for, you know, thousands of dollars, do you think it's worth maybe 15 to 20 minutes of your time for us to meet? Well, I mean, in all honesty, what, what do you think that you'll do so different this time? And that is, again, just a great question because if, you know, my house was on the market that long, I would want to know what the next agent is going to do differently, which is exactly why I need to see your home in person so that I can have a very customized approach to getting your home back on the market. Are you typically available in the afternoons or in the evenings? Well, you know, I think, um, I mean, you sound good. I, I've got to be honest, I haven't talked to, you know, many realtors, I've pretty much hung up on them. So because I'm getting inundated with calls today. But um, let me do this. Let me talk to my husband, because I think, you know, we had made up our mind with one of the neighborhood specialists. And um, let me get back with you. And, and maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll meet you too. 
Absolutely. Well, thank you for um, talking to your husband. Um, and so when do you, you guys usually talk at night or at, during the day? Is he working from home? Yeah, I mean, it's um, 1130. He comes home at five o'clock. So um, so later today, you know, when we have dinner, I'll just tell him about our conversation, because like I said, we had made sort of the decision to go that route. Um, but again, I don't want to make another mistake. So I wouldn't mind hearing you out to see if you do anything different um, than this neighborhood specialist. So that we should have probably went with the first time, but she had a higher commission. So we didn't want to, you know, we went with somebody with a lower commission and now we just really, you know, want to pick the right person and get the job done. Right. Absolutely. And so do you think that your husband will also want to pick the person that can get it, get it sold for top? market dollar and um and and get get your house sold for you this time well yeah absolutely i mean we both um you know we both already purchased another home and um you know we definitely want to get it sold so you've already purchased another home tina and where is that house at um it's just in north raleigh we we uh, built it so it's going to be completed in the next few months so we just have to you know obviously and we can we can afford to have both. It's just, we just wanna get into our new home and be done with this one. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure you're ready to start that next chapter of your life. And so the home is already completed? Uh, it's near completion. And so do you, when, do you know when it'll be completed? I know there's all types of construction. Um, yeah, it's um, end of March. End of March. So wouldn't it be lovely to be in your home at the your new home at the end end of March and have this chapter closed on your current house? Absolutely. I mean, that's the plan. So right, right. So I definitely need to meet with you and your husband sooner rather than later. If um, we could do this, you know, because my schedule does pile up pretty quickly, gets filled up pretty quickly. I could pencil you in for a time. You could talk to your husband about it this evening, and then I could follow up with you to just to confirm that that time's going to work. Um, would tomorrow at three or four be better for you? Um, well, I mean, I guess we can just do tomorrow at four, but like I said, if, if I could, I'm going to talk to him because I don't want to, I don't want to piss him off to be honest, you know, cause he's, He's had it with all of this, so I don't want to derail our plan. But, but yeah, let you can pencil in tomorrow at four, and then just call me uh, tomorrow morning, and um, you know I can talk to you a little more about that. Yeah, that sounds great. So we can talk tomorrow. Um, we'll pencil you in for tomorrow at four. You talk to your husband this evening. I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I definitely don't want to piss your husband off either. Um, so make sure that we have the best approach to everything. Um, what do you think stopped your home from selling? Um, well, we we're near a road. We're, we're the first house in off a road. So a lot of people complained about that. It doesn't bother us. I mean, we've been here for 20 years and we love it, but um, mm -hmm. you know, they just kept coming up with that. And, and then, you know, we, um, we have some uh, older, you know, older paint and our cabinets are not white. And so we were just going to do some cosmetic updates this time to, you know, enhance the home and hopefully offset the, the road noise and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you, you chose the home and there's lots of homes that are being sold with road noise. And so I definitely think that's something that, that we can tackle. And, and as far as those updates, again, when I come tomorrow at four, I'll bring um, a list of trusted contractors that I have that have um, fabulous pricing. And so just another reason for us to meet sooner rather than later, because I would, do you want to save some money on that, um, those improvements that you're doing? Yeah, I mean, saving money would be amazing. Yeah, so whether you choose to use me or not, then um, you know, you'll at least have these list of trusted vendors that hopefully could save you money with the improvements. Um, Tina, I do hope that um, there's been enough shared with you just to bring value to your husband this evening. Um, and if I can follow up with a call this evening, um, just to confirm our appointment at four tomorrow, how does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good, Wendy. Okay, thanks, Tina. All right, thanks. Look at her. Oh gosh, Let's everybody awesome. unmute and clap for Wendy. We put her on the spot. How do we think she did? Yeah, put her on the spot, all right. Great job, Wendy. Right? So, okay, 
What? So um, I did not have my scripts. <laughs> That's I know. the first problem. <laughs> really well. So what I like been doing it. When I think about feedback, there there are a few things you did really well. So I'm going to tell you what those are, in my opinion, and then I'll give you a couple of things that I think you could improve on. Fair. Fair. And that I, sounds great. I appreciate it. You know, Tina, I think what I just said is important too because a lot of role plays, I hear that from clients and agents for a long time, but a lot of times um, you role play with somebody and they don't give you anything that you could improve on. They just say, well, that was great, but we all, everyone can always improve. But if you're, if, if you think you, the person that you role played with is gonna take it personally, they're gonna get upset. Well, you know, why would you say, I, and people get defensive, you know, the ego stuff in the middle, you don't grow, you don't right. learn. So right. anyway, so- I love feedback. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. And so here's what I think you did really well, Wendy. Mimicking and matching her, you were like right there, you know, the, the emotion, the tone, the, the speed, you did that really well. And that's very important to do because uh, if you're if you're not mimicking and matching, meaning you don't sound like her or you're speaking way faster or the emotion is not the same, it you you breaks you you're not there's no affinity in the conversation. It's like you're in two different ends of the spectrum. So I, I think you did that really well. Repeating and approving, which is like the most important thing when you hear an objection before you start talking like, okay, so I hear and I understand and you did that really well too. Um, you also, I love when you said, wouldn't it be lovely to have your house sold? And I, I heard in Tina's tone when she responded, she's like, yeah, you know, it's like you lit her up when you use that line. I loved it. Um, let me see what else. Okay, so a couple of things that I think you can work on and improve. I heard a few upswings. So if, if you have a chance to listen to the recording and you all know what I mean by, by an upswing, Tina, you think they know? Um, yeah. Maybe explain it to them because there's a lot of new people on here. And I agree with that. And that I want to work on that. I actually was thinking of um, like a, a coach just for like acting or something because I um, I don't know if other people have where they can record their calls, um, mm -hmm. but I do listen back and yes, the downswing you, if you use a downswing, you're more likely to get a yes on the other end. The upswing sounds like you're not sure. Exactly. hundred percent right. downswings give you automatic authority. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. People in positions of authority they all use a downswing. When mom says to, to, to the son or, or daughter, go to your room, that's a downswing. It's not go to your room, that's an upswing. So it, it, it takes the authority away. You could be saying, a, you could be using a great script, but it just causes the listener to question whether they should listen to you or do what you're saying. It just, so th that's really, really important. Um, something to, and listening to your recordings and your calls is great, Wendy, because you, you immediately said, yeah, I know I got to work on that because you've heard it. If you don't listen to yourself, you don't really know what you sound like. I remember that was like one of the most brutal ways to learn, to listen to yourself out. It's like painful for real, mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you, when you realize Oh my God, I wouldn't give myself an appointment. I wouldn't list with myself. That was horrible. Now there's room for improvement because you can't change what you don't acknowledge. So there you go. That's a great thing to do. And the other thing I'm going to say is just because I like to just be direct in closing for appointments. The last close, the last time you asked for the appointment, you said would, would, um, three o'clock work for you or four be better something like that before that every time you asked was is afternoon or evenings better for you i i would prefer that from the very first time and that another thing you did great you asked for that appointment several times i was gonna say that was my feedback i as a as person listening she kept yeah. asking and going back and going back and i i made a mental note of that 
absolutely. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. I would just, because I'm thinking when you said would afternoon evenings be better, let's say they say afternoon. Now you got to narrow down the time in the afternoon versus if you just say would three o'clock work for you for be better from the very beginning, every time. And they say, no, that's, you know, that's too early or I got to speak with my husband the next time. Maybe you could say, well, would five o'clock work for you and your husband or do you think 6 p.m. be better? So I, it's just that choice of time where versus just afternoon or evening, you're still going to have to go back and figure out the time. So mm -hmm. great job. A little, <laughs> a little shortcut. Yeah. And as the listener, you know, as the seller, um, you know, you were very calm and um, and I, I kind of tried to get into that. I'm sort of annoyed, but she's kind of nice. So I'm a nice person. So I'm not going to be rude to her um, because that's just naturally who I am. When people call, I'm not I'm not a, a witch on the phone. So that's just me, right? So you're gonna find people like Tina call on the phone where I can't be mean to people. I'll be like, no, no, thank you. I'm not interested, thanks for calling. And I'll be short with them, but I'm never rude. I'm never gonna swear at somebody and I will never hang up without saying goodbye. So you're gonna get people like me. You're gonna get people that are more direct, people that are pissed off, people, whatever, it is what it is. But, you know, and, and when I said, well, I have to speak to my husband, she's like, well, does he want to also sell the home for the highest amount of money? you know, in the shortest amount of time or whatever. Well, yes, of course he does. Well, how about we do this? I'll pencil you in, you know, you just, you did keep closing, um, which I think was appropriate and I thought was really good. Um, and then the, you answered that question well, where um, I said, where were you when my home was for sale? And that is, a, you know, that's a typical thing that we learn. It's like, well, you know, I, I appreciate that, but you know, your agent didn't call me. I'm a top agent. I always call all the top agents when I list my properties. So unfortunately, I didn't get a call because there's 3000 homes for sale. As much as I would love to know every single home on the market, I'm not a robot. I'm not a computer. So your agent didn't call me. That's exactly why we need to get together because I'm going to show you a specific plan where that would not have been missed. Yeah, that's a right? oh, I, I love that script. I'm going to when you put up the you steal that Jackie. OK, good. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Like, look, see, I just, the way you said that, I know that script, just the way you delivered, I'm going to transcribe that girl. I'm stealing. Good. It. Well, and I just came off of that as the top of my head, right? Because it's just, it's in there. It's, it's like you make these calls. It never goes away once you get good. Right. And it just, it, the, the BS, I, my husband always says like, gosh, the BS just comes out of your mouth. I'm like, it's not BS, honey. It's, I learned this stuff. It's ingrained in me. If you took Jackie or Wendy or myself and you threw us in the middle of you know some city anywhere usa and you gave us a phone and a dialer you know now now we're armed with the ability to just make money anywhere we go right because we've learned how to get sellers over themselves get get an appointment when a seller says i've already interviewed for the job thank you i've picked someone okay well good i'm so glad that you did your homework this time whatever um so yeah that was that was awesome wendy especially putting her on the spot and she had no script I was just gonna better. say that. How amazing was it that she doesn't have scripts in front of you? And I, you know, we were talking about the practice. Is it two years you said that Wendy's been doing this? A couple years now, Wendy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did part time in like 2019 till July 2020, but then really went full time calling July 2020 to so to now, and now I do it every day. Yeah, think My about bread and butter. She all the objections that Tina gave her no scripts in front of her and she's able to do that on the first day that she started making these calls i'm, I'm sure she was in her head reading scripts yeah. that's how it is you got to go through through the process it was amazing it was really awesome and really when when wendy did it you know i would say to her okay here's here's how you do it you know you set up your stand-up desk you have all your scripts i mean she did everything by the book like she was very a good student and she would just be in there, you know, standing up, making her calls, wasn't distracted. She'd have times where she was in a, a competition with other people out of state, you know, and they would all be in this room for eight hours and they could only break for lunch and then come back. And she's like, this is hell. Why did I sign up for this? But it got her to the point where, you know, she just was committed. And so it takes that level of commitment to do this activity, because in the beginning, it's like, why am I a real estate agent? This sucks. This is what real estate is. I thought it was going to be fun showing houses and talking to sellers and buyers. This part sucks, but this is the part 
that I don't care who you are. This is the part that once you learn it, it you will never go broke, right? Um, because there, Wendy's not going to get all the listings. Wendy's going to be, you know, one day Wendy's going to be on vacation and or she's not going to call the seller at the right time. Maybe the seller's not available in the morning and you caught him at night. Um, maybe Wendy didn't connect with that seller because she's female and this was a guy and he just doesn't like lady realtors because he just fired one and he wants a man and Trevor happens to be calling and Trevor just happened to get him on a good day. It just, you just got to do the activity. Consistency. I love the results, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right, Tina. I actually, the $2 million listing, which had expired at 2.5. And so I'm going on just a little bit below two, but it was the um, group of agents that I'm working with, you know, in the, um, in the coaching network that they said, this is the best time of year. No other agents are calling. And I got the listing on Christmas Eve because mm -hmm. I was still continuing to call that week before Christmas. And she texted me on Christmas Eve and said, Merry Christmas. We chose you because of your grit and determination. And I went against some top agents in the market yeah. uh, that weren't calling expired. She just knew who they were. So, right. Right. Exactly. Wow. What a great story. That's amazing. Yeah. And that, and that, but that's what it takes. It's like people that are, you know, expired, especially want somebody who's aggressive they want somebody who's going to be committed they want to see those skills come to pass and they and if you just are weak and you know you're not going to go after it how are you going to go after the buyers and you might even say that mr seller you know i'm not trying to annoy you but i want to demonstrate to you how aggressive i'm going to be with the the lead that calls on your on your on your house these are this is how aggressive i, I am with the buyers that's why i have a great reputation in the market that i'm i'm you know i'm not going to let something fall apart um, i'm going to work hard for you so so i think those things are very very important somebody asked a question they said, you did a great job, Wendy, making sure to continue to ask for the appointment. Question, would you try to get them on Zoom if it appears that they are not sure about meeting at the house in person? So, um, Wendy, I don't know if you've ever done that, but Jackie, maybe you could speak to that too with your your students in SalesX. Yeah, Hi. I definitely oh, do. Ahead, so, no, and actually it was, I, mm -hmm. I the $2 million listing was all done by FaceTime and Zoom. I didn't right. meet her in person until after she had actually signed the listing agreement um, because she's physically not here. So nice. um, in yeah, the Zoom presentation, I think, is something that also needs to be practiced and um, rehearsed as well, too, because it's become very important um, and something that we need to offer and is a good thing to offer, um, especially right now. Some people are still hesitant about having people in their house. They're they've already moved out of the house. There's so many vacant homes. And so they're they're actually not in the house. And to be able to offer that um, right away is important. Agreed. Yeah, I second that. Absolutely. hundred percent. What I say to my clients too, is you want to schedule your appointments for as soon as possible. My mantra is never go on an appointment tomorrow that you can go on today. Mm -hmm. Because especially physicals and expires, because there are a lot of agents calling. So I, I learned the hard way, like in the beginning, my first year, I, I didn't feel comfortable and I had to study the comps and I didn't know the neighbor, all this stuff. So I would set expired appointments for the next day. And I got plenty of calls from the aggressive agents in my market canceling. Oh, I met with so-and-so last night. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I just met, you know, motivated seller. I even pre-qualified the appointment, but somebody came ahead of me and listed that house because I, so zoom is a great option for you to have because sometimes people are just not available to meet in person or out of town whatever the reason may be how fun is it to take a two million dollar listing on zoom way to go wendy yes Isn't that cool that's so cool yeah. i love it i love it well let's do this let's um maybe jackie i'll throw some common objections to you um and then maybe we can just brainstorm what we would say um okay. All right, so how about, um, well, thank you for calling. I'm gonna wait till next year. Okay, so my favorite way to respond to that is, first I would repeat and approve, I'd say, okay, so, so Tina, what I hear you saying is you're, you're not really looking to put the house back on the market right now, and you may just wait till next year before you're ready to sell it again, is that correct? 
Yeah, I think that, you know, we want to, you know, we want to see what happens with the market and we're just not sure right now. It might, you know, we're just, we just want to wait. Sure, I completely understand. I'm just going to ask you this real quick, Tina. If you were absolutely confident that your house would sell, would you consider putting it back on the market now? Um, well, you know, we, we just put it on for three months and, and it didn't. So, um, so I oh. think you know, we can't get our price. We only will move if we get our price. Right. Well, and I, and I completely understand. And, and after being on the market for three months in this hot market, seller's market, which is absolutely working in your favor right now and not selling, I could see why you would have second thoughts about whether you should put it on the market now. And what I hear you saying to Tina is, you want to sell it for the most money possible. You have a price in mind and you want to get every penny out of the property. Would that, would that be fair to say? That's fair. Yeah. So here's what I propose, Tina, and I know you're not necessarily looking to sell the house right now. I'd like to meet with you for just 20 minutes so I can show you what I do differently to get houses sold for top market price. And then, hey, at the end of our meeting, you can decide if you want to go ahead and sell it now or you want to keep it off the market for a little while. Would three o'clock work for you today? Would four be better? Three o'clock works. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I just want to give them kind of ideas to to hear because mm -hmm. this is just it's a these are common things. One thing, um, this is another one, and you probably have run into it before. Um, you know, ja well, probably not because Jackie would close them right at the, the appointment. She's not leaving the house without the contract. <laughs> but if you did, I mean, you, there were probably yeah. times yes. you called back and they said, you know, Jackie, we really liked you, but we decided we're going to use the neighborhood specialist. Have you heard that one before? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. See, so they haven't listed yet. They haven't listed, but they, they decided they're going to use the neighborhood specialist after they met you and they really liked you, but... Now okay. the neighborhood specialist comes, they of course pitch them on that. And then a lot of times the neighborhood specialists overprice the home to get the, the, the yes. deal, especially in this market. Yes. Yeah. So I, I got to ask you this though, or, or let's have a conversation about this. The last thing I want to have happen is for me to be blindsided by an objection like that at, even, at the listing appointment or after the listing appointment. Yeah. And, and so I prefer to, to, pre-qualify an appointment really well so mm -hmm. i know what i'm coming into i i know i you should never i listen in the beginning my first year tours, i had no idea what i was doing so i did plenty of that right but once you learn how to pre-qualify well you're gonna ask are they interviewing other agents um who is it that they're interviewing if it's a neighborhood if you know they're interviewing somebody i would you could you need to ask who it is Right. I'm curious who's the agent that you'll be speaking with. If they mention neighborhood specialists, even if they don't tell you who the name, which 80% of the time they used to tell me. Yeah. You know, I think agents are, oh, would they really tell you? Not if you don't ask. They do tell you. Right. Most of the time they do. Or, or if you ask and you sound weird when you ask, like you're up to something weird, you know, <laughs> like if you just ask, like as a matter of, you know, hey, I'm just curious who, are you, who is it that you're interviewing? They tell you. But if they don't, and they mention neighborhood specialists, when you're doing a market analysis, you could go in the neighborhood, you could kind of, you know, have an idea, figure it out if it's, a... anyway, I would, I obviously, and I'm sure they all would rather know this ahead of time, because then we can show up prepared. And what I used to do, Tina, is, uh, so here, here you go. I remember one appointment that I set it was an expired and they told, they told me over the, they, she wouldn't give me the appointment, this lady. They were moving, like they were leaving town. The house is vacant. They're leaving, moving out of state in two days. Really motivated seller. She wouldn't give me an appointment because she said, we've already chosen an agent. And I said, who is it? And she said, my brother-in-law is an appraiser and it's an agent that he recommended because she sells a lot of homes in my area. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, okay. Anyway, I kept closing. I kept going around and it, it was a no. In the end, she said to me, this is like a 20 minute phone call. She said, let me speak with my husband and I'll call you back. I said, okay. Like I couldn't get through it. You know, it's not like I just said, okay, but it was like, 
And then um, before I hung up and I said, hey, I'm just curious, who is the agent? What's, you know, who's the agent? And she told me the agent's name. And she said, I'll talk to my husband, I'll call you back. An hour went by, she didn't call me back. In that time, I went in the MLS and I looked up that agent stats. And I, I used to sell homes all over the Fort Lauderdale, greater Fort right. Lauderdale. I didn't specialize in any area. If this one expired everywhere above a certain price, I'm there. So yep. I, I was not a neighborhood specialist of any kind. I had, it just so happens that I had sold in the past 12 months, four homes in that neighborhood. Right. Call that a neighborhood specialist. So she gives me the agent's name. I, while I'm waiting and she's not calling me back, I go in the MLS and I look up the agent. That agent had sold two homes in her neighborhood in the last 12 months. Right. I called her, I, I was gonna call her back anyway, but having that information now, wow. I, I could talk about that, which is exactly what I did. And, right. and it doesn't mean you're gonna, so in preparing for a listing appointment, when I know they're interviewing the neighborhood specialist or I have the agent's name, I do the same thing. I call it, I tell my clients, do a report card on that agent. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you're going to talk bad about the agent. No, I'm just going to present the facts. Ah, right, right. It, it, every successful business on this planet, they do that. They know exactly who their competition is, exactly what they're doing, and how to, how to present their product or service in a way that the, the consumer or the client is going to say, oh, okay, this is who I should choose. It's, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to make stuff up or I'm not going to lie about it, but presenting the facts, the seller has a, the right to know. They should right. know. Anyway, I called this lady back and I, and I said, I know you mentioned your, if you spoke to their own, no, not yet. I know you mentioned the agent's name and, and I'm sure she's, she's, a, she's a good agent. And since we spoke, I took the liberty to actually go in the multiple listing service. This is the script that I use. I took the liberty to actually go in the multiple listing service since, because I know you said she sells a lot of homes in your area. And just so happens that she had two sales in your area in the last year, which is great. And I've had four that actually sold. And long story short, I got an appointment. This is like 11 o'clock in the morning. The age, she had an appointment with the agent at 6 p.m. that day to sign the listing. Mm -hmm. So I, I got an appointment like at four o'clock, met with her and her husband, and they wouldn't sign. And I used the line, Tina, I said, because they wanted to think about it. You know, I know the other agent is coming. I mean, there's no time to think about this now. And right. I said to her, you know, I know this is a very important decision. And obviously you had that agent. And how about this? Let me go outside. I have a phone, a few phone calls that I need to return. Anyhow, I'll give your husband, you and your husband five, 10 minutes. You could discuss it make a decision and then I can come back in, we get the paperwork signed. She said, okay. So I walk outside, you know, biting my teeth outside, come back in, they signed the listing. I that love it. it. I so, love it. Anyway, I, I guess I didn't answer your question really. What, what, no, no, what do you do? You know, what do you do yeah. if you leave an appointment and then you call back and you hear this? Well, do things correctly so that doesn't happen to you. Exactly. And in this case, and this was an agent that I was talking to about this, she said, what would you say? And um, this neighbor, this agent is actually the neighborhood specialist. So she does sell maybe like, I don't know, 12 homes a year. They're higher end homes. Yeah. She does specialize in that neighborhood and lives in that neighborhood. So the agent went out, had a great appointment, has been following up with this buy the seller for a year. The seller says, yes, I'll list with you. But then on the corner, sees a coming soon sign with a way overpriced listing, calls that agent and the agent says, well, I'm the neighborhood specialist and gives them a price much higher than wow. what the agent said. And the agent was going to email the documents. So then the agent calls back and says, okay, I'm ready to send you the documents. Oh, well, I, I'm going to list, I think, with the neighborhood specialist. You're really great but sorry and so i just thought you know it'd be fun to have us brainstorm so, together you know so I, I don't know what comes to my mind in a situation like this so now they say that to me i would take a little bit of time i would say you know i don't know how you could put off like call him back in half an hour i'll take a little bit of time to go in the mls since i didn't know this just came right. out of nowhere i'm blindsided right. i go in the mls and i do a report card on this agent Right. So she had 12 homes sell, 
what was the list price to the sales price ratio? On average, how many price reductions before they sold? How many expired? Who actually sold these properties? Did she sell it? Was she the listing agent and buyer's right. agent? Right. Was she just listing and somebody else? There's so much you could look at and then call the seller back and, and present the facts and then use your stats or your company or your team stats and show how much more beneficial and powerful and better results you'd be able to get compared to, and you're right, neighborhood specialists, that's what they do. They have a reputation for overpricing properties. They just want a bunch of signs out there. So that that's how I would approach that and call the seller back with the fact. Exactly. No, I think that's that's great. And that's why I kind of, you know, I said to her, you know, neighborhood specialist, what does that mean to you? Well, they they sell a lot of homes in the neighborhood and then kind of unpack that a little bit. Well, let me ask you this. If I put a sign in your neighborhood and I got all the local buyers, her her and I or the agent and I would get all the local buyers. But for her not having listings yeah. outside of the neighborhood, which we know 90% of the, of the buyers come from outside of the neighborhood, it actually minimizes the marketing efforts. So not so we will not only get the local buyers with the, our local signs in the neighborhood, we will also attract buyers from other cities coming to your neighborhood. So, yeah. you know, I love that script. I use that yeah. too. So that's that a good is one too. Yeah. Yeah. That's but I love it. But that's the thing. If you do it right the first time, you're going to know who they're interviewing. You're going to have all of your report card with you and you're going to be able to, to land that deal. Um, all right. So somebody said a lot of expireds right now want to know the commission to set the appointment. There are so many discount agents approaching them. Would love to hear how Jackie handles a seller that wants to know the commission on the phone. Um, no commission on the phone. Yeah, I was going to say, you never handle the commission on the phone. Absolutely not. I mean, there's different things you could say. You repeat and approve. You know, Tina, obviously, I understand that that the commission the commission you pay is important to you. And, and I, I'm, I'm assuming that from, from your perspective, you're thinking the lower the commission you pay, the more money you keep. And, and you're entitled to keep every penny from the sale of this property. And Tina... We will discuss commission during our meeting. And just to put your mind at ease, my commission is negotiable. And ultimately, it's going to be what you and I agree upon. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you that working with me would be the best financial decision you can make. And we'll agree on the commission. We'll get this house sold for you. So you just got to you gotta bypass it. And the biggest thing you said is the commission is negotiable. That gets the mind at ease. Okay, she's going to negotiate with me. But when she goes in and she's powerful and she's got all the comps and she's organized and looks great in her suit and, you know, is commanding um, that respect, you know, they, they potentially she's going to be able to get more than 4%. Another agent said, oh, the other agent said they'll, they'll only charge you 4% if I'll list with you, you know, and, and I know I have my own objections for that, but yeah. Now you're at the appointment. We're ready to sign. Well, Jackie, Joe over here said he'd do it for 4%. Yeah. So one of my favorite handlers for this, let me back up for a minute before I give you an objection handler. Sometimes people ask just because they have to ask. This, mm. this used to happen to me. Like mm. a couple of years ago, I went on an appointment with my son, Tina, before we started the company, I was off bold and, and he's making calls and I set an expired appointment and we go on the appointment together. He's there. And at the end of the appointment, the seller said to me, well, you know, I got a lot of calls from agents and the other agent called and they sounded pretty good and they could do it for 5%. Can you do it? And I just looked at him and I said, no, my commission is 6%. And he, on the spot, and this is the latest one, because I, you know, I don't really, I haven't gone on listing appointments for a long time. He looked at me and said, that's okay. I, I, I just had to ask. That was it. A bit, yeah. It. So right. I, before I give you the handler, I'm thinking, don't throw the entire kitchen sink at him immediately, because sometimes that's all it takes. Mm -hmm. and, and I think to, I think, no, I know for a fact, when your presentation is strong, they see value. People pay for value. Yeah, there, yeah. There's some, you know, there, there, there's a small percentage of people that they're gonna hire the cheapest agent, and and that's that's fine. That's not for you, but that's a that's a very small percentage. Most people, when they see the value, and that's your responsibility 
to, to show the value, to get them excited about what you can, they'll pay. They, they, they do it all day long. If you're in a position where you actually have to handle this objection, I would say, and you know, Tina, I understand why another agent offering you a lower commission would be attractive to you because obviously you want to be able to walk away with the most money. And Tina, can I share with you what concerns me about you possibly using a discount agent? You see the whole method, you obviously wait for them to answer. I'm just gonna for the sake. So see, Tina, the whole method of doing business for discount agents is, is based on discounting, whatever they do. And I want you to consider that the agent that you hire is the person that's gonna be involved in all of the conversations and all of the negotiations with potential buyers and with real estate agents who are representing these buyers. And the topic of these negotiations and conversations is the price and terms that you're going to sell your home for. So just think about this, Tina. This agent is willing to cut their commission to take your listing. How strong do you think they could possibly be defending you and the price that we set on your home today? Hmm. I mean, I'm signing with Jackie, <laughs> but it's so true. Think about that. The com that's the most important point. The conversations they're gonna be having with the other agents and the buyers without you there, if they're so willing to cut their self-worth up front with you, yeah. how, how strong are they gonna be defending this price that we set, your equity, right? Think about that. This is a huge decision. So I love that. That's the, that's the most powerful one. I hadn't used this objection handler in a long time. And I, there was one word that I switched that, and it's a very powerful word. So when you say they're going to be representing you in all the conversations blah, blah, blah. and so Tina, when you think about it, if this agent doesn't have the courage to defend their own worth, when it comes to their commission, how mm -hmm. strong could they possibly be defending you in the price of your home? Tina, I have that courage. Yep. Let's go ahead and get this done right. Sign right here. And the yeah. most important thing she said is, let's go ahead and get this done right. Sign right here. The, that's the one thing I think, even for me, I'm a, I'm a IS, you know, and I, I have high D2, but I didn't, in the beginning, I failed to close. I failed to close because I wanted them to go, wow, that was an amazing presentation. I want to use you as my realtor. Yeah. And they do sometimes, they're ready, but I never asked for the sale. And I used to get so frustrated because I would walk out and then the excitement would start to go down and you lost 70% of your power at that point. And then, you know, my coach at the time, coached me up back on that to close, 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 and just ask for the signature, just ask. I mean, what's the worst they can say is no, but either way, when you walk out that door without that contract signed, that's when they're called the neighborhood specialist. They see the sign, they talk to their friend, Bob, who gave them this agent that could do it for 4%. Your chances are going down. The excitement is over, right? The, press, the, the, the movie has ended. And when are you most emotional about the movie? The minute it ends and you're crying and, oh my God, that was so good. And you stay in the theater to watch the credits, to hopefully see some bloopers and, you know, right? Your emotions high. You leave the movie theater, you get in the car, you go home, it's over. That's such it's a over. great analogy. That's so true. And right? I have to say this because you said you didn't always close. I didn't either, Tina. <laughs> I have to admit, you know, with all the driver personality because you, it's some, it, it's practice. In right. that moment, we you may feel uncomfortable, and I hey, I went through all of that, and yeah. just like you, now you I would leave the appointment. I'm thinking, what what am I doing? What's going on? Right. And then you, you it's it really it's not uphill anymore. You know, the movie has ended. So with practice and you know, you lose some, you lose a few, and then you start like, ah, I don't want to keep doing that again. Exactly. And becoming more and more comfortable with closing. I and mean, that's super important. That's critical. Yeah. It's sort of like with the buyers, you know, you start showing buyers and buyers and buyers and you start losing them. And because you're not signed in a commitment a agreement, right? A loyalty agreement, some sort of commitment, 
you start bringing that paper with you and you're getting better at commitments, right? And so so that's the same thing with the seller. It's like they they lose that excitement. So, well, this was fun. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I know I did. Um, Wendy, thank you for being our guinea pig. And um, that was awesome for you to help uh, our Freedom Builder family get better. And then of course, if you guys want to be in Jackie's Sales X training, there's a, I don't know, coupon code, I can't remember, it's TINA, capital letters. Um, and that's what Jackie does every week. What, Tuesdays and Thursdays, she's sitting there training you guys. Every day there's videos that she sends out. There's a video library of all the appointments and the live role plays, live calls, live everything. Um, so, so sign up for a course if you guys want to learn to do this because, you know, I think it's a crucial part of the business. So percent why not model something that you that that's already proven to your results instead of trying to figure out by yourself so thank you tina yeah. you're fun. welcome thank you jackie all right everybody bye. have a great weekend bye-bye thank you thank you Ash.